Here are seven things that can help calm your nervous system down and stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, why do we wanna do this? One is to get you out of fight or flight mode and allow your body to really relax and take the stress off of the nervous system. And when you're in parasympathetic, then you can actually heal. You give your body an opportunity to really repair itself and heal. It's the rest and digest um, mode of your body where it's not you know, constantly on the lookout for any stresses or in danger. And when you're in parasympathetic, then you're gonna feel less fatigue, less symptoms, less pain, and things like that. So it's very important to try to shift your body into the parasympathetic mode. I know it feels almost impossible, especially in the beginning of your recovery, because you almost have no control over it. Almost, you know, almost feels like no matter what you do, you can't get out of that fight or flight mode or that buzzy, wired feeling where you know you feel almost like you have internal vibrations. So let's get right into it. Number one it's gonna be cool showers before bed. Now, I never really tried this until I got sick. I always heard about it. I heard that cold showers are good or even cool showers. They don't have to be super cold. But with cool showers, what it does is it physically stimulates your parasympathetic nervous system. It's one of those things that it's very easy to do. It's not like you have to sit down for 20 minutes and meditate and visualize these things. No, you just hop in the shower for two to three minutes have some regular warm or hot water, and then the last 20 to 30 seconds of the shower, you want to blast a bunch of cool or cold water. Ideally, you work your way up from cool to cold, and that's really gonna help you relax once you get out of the shower. Once you get to bed, you're gonna feel your body a lot calmer. I try to take a cool shower every night, and it really helps me sleep like a baby. Number two is sleeping with an eye mask. Now, this is huge. There's a famous book, and you know, I made a video about this before on YouTube and I even put the links in the description to an eye mask as well as the book that breaks down the science behind sleeping. But sleeping with an eye mask, essentially it blocks out all the light from entering, entering your eyes. And light has such a huge impact on sleep. I don't think people realize just how much of an impact it has. They did a study where they brought someone into a lab and they let him sleep in a completely pitch black room no light whatsoever, and they measured that as a baseline. And the next night they had him sleep and they shined some light on the back of his calf the size of a quarter, but this small, on the back of his calf so it wasn't even in his eyes, but just that little bit of light lowered his sleep quality by a significant amount. And they were actually able to measure that. And what that tells us is that even a small amount of light, not even just entering your eyes, but on your body, makes a huge difference in the quality of sleep. And as we know, sleep is absolutely crucial for recovering and just letting your body heal. That's a time when your body produces HGH, when it starts to heal itself, repair, when it's in rest and digest, when you're in the most calm state. So I would highly recommend sleeping with an eye mask. You can get them off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm, I don't take any commission on it whatsoever. I'm literally just putting it because it can help you guys. And I would also suggest getting blackout curtains to make your room pitch black. Number three is Epsom salt baths. So this is something I like to do every, every two to three weeks. And not only does it help you just relax more because you're in a warm bath, it actually has something to do with cleansing your body of charged ions. So I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but you can research yourself the positive effects of Epsom salt baths. I noticed that it helped me quite a bit in the beginning, especially get, getting deeper sleeps and you know helping with the pain and, and the fatigue, especially with the fatigue. Number four is listening to calming sounds or even music before and while sleeping. So I would always sleep with AirPods in. Before AirPods, it was actually just Bluetooth headphones and I would keep them in while I'm asleep and they would help me have deeper sleeps than I would normally get. Not only does it block out the sound from you know people walking around the house or traffic outside or wind, rain, things like that, it'll actually have these different frequencies that allow your brain to go into a calmer and more relaxed state. So it's one of those passive things that doesn't take much except for putting in putting in headphones and hitting play. You can find these on YouTube. I could put a link in the description. Number five is avoiding heavy and sugary meals. Now, diet is a stressor that a lot of us forget about. Um, you know, diet can play a huge role in stress on our body. We wanna avoid foods high in sugar, like candy, chocolate, things like that, even caffeine and supplements, or heavy meals, you know, burgers and fries and lasagna, things like that. 
every once in a while they're okay, but just know that that's going to cause your nervous system to, you know, be a little more active and it's basically causing that big spike in your digestion and big dip. A lot of people don't realize that when it comes to fast food, a lot of times it can take more energy for our body to digest the food than we gain from the food. So food, if you think about it, it's units of energy. And when we eat energy, we consume that energy and it gives us more energy. But what happens is stuff like fast food or like poutine fries, ice cream, things like that, we actually lose energy when we eat that kind of stuff. You know, let's just say we eat a bacon cheddar burger, which, oh, that's delicious. I wanna eat it right now, but it's okay once in a while. But if you have it a lot and you have that with fries and gravy and all this other stuff, then it's actually draining your body of energy and it's very taxing. So that's something to think about, of avoiding heavy and sugary meals. Number six is avoiding long periods of screen time. So I'm the worst when it came to YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Netflix and movies, things like that, especially when I was getting better. And the reason why is because those things are stimulating, especially when you're looking at a screen for a long period of time, you'll feel your eyes get tired. It's hard to fall asleep after, it gets you wired. So those things just physically stimulate your body, but a lot of times not even just physically, but also emotionally, you get invested into the movie. And especially in the beginning of your recovery, when you're more sensitive and you're more emotional, you'll find that. You'll watch a movie, you'll get really teary-eyed and you'll get moody, you'll feel super sad and very sympathetic and empathetic with the characters. Then you go on this emotional roller coaster. And the reason for that is, you know, you just, you have all these emotions built up about your own recovery that you're holding inside. And when you see something on the screen, you resonate with that. So the sadness comes out, the anger might come out. I found that, you know, there were movies that I watched a hundred times before, but the one time I watched it when I was sick, I started crying, bawling my eyes out uncontrollably. So just limit your screen time, or if you do need to look at a screen, just take breaks throughout the day. And this leads me to my final and last point, number seven, is wear blue light blocking glasses. So at the end of the day, in today's world, looking at screens, phones, looking at blue light, things like that, it's inevitable. Like it's unavoidable. We're gonna look at our phones, we're gonna look at computers, TVs. It's just something you can't really get away from for most people. So something that you can do to negate the negative effects of blue light which is something that just stimulates your brain and keeps you awake at night and gets you wired, is having something like blue light blocking glasses. Now, I have blue light blockers built into my glasses, and these are prescription too. I found a website that does them for very cheap, very affordable, it's called firmoo.com, F-I-R-M-O-O, and I got these glasses, prescription, anti-scratch, and blue light lockers built in for about 130 bucks. If you don't have prescription lenses, you could also get some from Amazon, just blue light blocking glasses for about 20 bucks. And it's very cheap, very affordable, and it makes a massive difference, especially if you're someone who goes on a computer or looks at a screen a lot throughout the day. If you play video games, if you have a desk job, absolutely, you would, should 100% be wearing blue light blocking glasses and it actually make a difference because your eyes will feel less sore and you'll get less of that burning sensation when you're working on the screen. So those are seven things that you can do to help the nervous system. These are all things that I've actually implemented in my recovery, especially in the beginning. Now I do some of these things when I can, but these are very easy, simple things that you can do. And more than half of these things that I listed are free that cost you nothing extra and Cut and needs very little effort to do. So I would definitely implement these into your recovery. Start doing them and comment down below if you're doing any of these or if there's any other things that you suggest that would be good for other people. Hope this video helps. If you haven't already, then join our Facebook community of Thrivers. It's a private community where people just like you are looking for advice and inspiration to get better and start living a life of thriving health. And it's a place where I do live Q and A's every now and then. It's a way we can all interact with each other and we're all on the same mission, like I said, to get to that goal of thriving health. So if that's something like you, if that's something you wanna do and you wanna join the Thriver community, just hit the link down below and you can apply to join our free community of Thrivers. It doesn't cost you anything, we just ask you a few questions and make sure you agree to be nice and be helpful in the group and contribute and we'll accept you. Just click the link down below if you want that and I will see you guys in the next video. Always remember that you are just one mind shift away from living a life with thriving health. See you next time.